A few things I want to show you that I think you'll find helpful when it comes to customizing your Word environment is first off, the status bar down below. If you don't want to see some of the stats on there, you want to hide them, or better yet, you want to find out what other stats are available to add to the status bar, go ahead and right click anywhere on it and you get the shortcut menu of stats that are available. And those that are checked are either displayed right now or will be displayed when you do something that will display it. Like for example, caps lock. When I click on that and it checks it, and I click off, it doesn't add it down below or it doesn't display it until I hit the caps lock key on the keyboard and then it says, okay, your cap locks is on. Go ahead and hit that key on the keyboard again and it disappears. Now to go ahead and get rid of that, let me right click again and deselect it, uncheck it. So when I hit the caps lock again key, it won't display it down below in the status bar. Let me click off to get rid of it. Next is the office theme. Now the office theme right now is colorful, meaning that when I open up an office application like Word here, its proprietary color is blue. When I open up Access, it's going to be red, PowerPoint orange, and so forth. So that's what's called the colorful theme. If I want to go ahead and see what other themes are available, then let's go ahead and go backstage, click on File, go down to Options. The general category or tab is selected by default. Come down here to personalize your copy of Microsoft Office. Notice it's not Word, it's Office. So whatever you do in this section, it updates all the applications in Microsoft Office. Again, Excel, Access, Outlook, including Word here. So if I want to change the Office theme so it's not colorful, or displays that proprietary color blue for Word, and green for Excel, and so on, then click on the drop-down arrow and hooey, look at all them choices. Well, for the sake of this video, let's choose one, white, and then click okie dokie, and hey, it updates it to white. Well, except for the Backstage File tab and the Share button, Let's see if it updated in all the other Office applications, or we'll pick one. Like down below, I've got my Excel shortcut. Click on that. Is it white or green? It's white. And vice versa, what I do in another Office application, as far as updating the Office theme, by going backstage, File, down to Options, General Selected, come down here to personalize your copy of Microsoft Office and change it. There it is. All the Office applications are in white, so now I'm going to put them all back to Colorful and click OK. So it's colorful for Excel, proprietary color is green, close out, and for Word is blue. Let's go ahead and go backstage again because in that same section, down to Options, again General, to personalize your copy of Microsoft Office is the username and initials. Now, I recommend that you update this because if you leave it the default name, which might be the name of your computer, like Dell or HP, that when you create a new document, it's going to have that name as the author. So if you want it to be your name and also include the initials, then go ahead and update that. It's also tied to comments. So when you insert or edit the comment, you'll have your name tied to it and others, vice versa. When they edit or insert a comment, you can find out who did it. That is, if they updated and personalized their copy of Office, and also, it's used to identify you when sharing the document to say, hey, this is Kurt's document. So go ahead and update that. And while we're here, let me come down to Startup Options. And down below, checked, is show the start screen when this application starts. As you recall in the first training video, when I opened up Word, it showed me the startup screen. And it didn't go right to a blank Word document. Well, for me, pretty much any time I open up Word, I'm going to be creating a new document. I don't need to see the start screen. So let me go ahead and uncheck that. And also let me go to white because for me, I don't like the white text against a dark background. I prefer dark text against a white background. So for all of the Office applications, I'll have the white theme and click okie dokie. Of course, it updates it to the white background. Dark text stands out a little bit more for me. And then when I go ahead and close out of here to open up Word again, it won't go to the start screen, but go right to a blank Word document. Let's go ahead and open it up. Double click. And there we go, no start screen. Next, when it comes to opening or saving your documents, if you have those commands on the quick access toolbar, well, we've got one. I don't have the open, which I'll show you how to add in a later training video, but when you click on save, for example, it takes me backstage. Now that's fine if I wanna go ahead and save it to the cloud, but when I wanna save it to this computer, that gets annoying because, well, I can go ahead and come over here to the recent folders that I was in if I wanna save it to that folder and click on it to go to the folder. Or I can go ahead and click Browse, and it opens up the Save As window. Anytime you're saving a document for the first time, it'll open up the Save As window. Well, in this case, it goes backstage first, and then it opens up the Save As window. So I can go ahead and save it on my computer, find a place to save it. 
But if I want to bypass that and just go, look, open up the Save As window, save me a click and not have to go backstage first, because for the most part, I'll be saving it to my computer. And I don't want to go backstage. Then let's go ahead and come down here and go to Options and set the options for when it comes to saving. And then come over here and check Don't Show the Backstage When Opening or Saving Files. So when I click OK, then I click Save. It doesn't go backstage. It goes right to the Save As window. I save myself an extra click, and that makes all the difference in the world. In any case, while we're here, actually, when I save the document for the first time, it'll perform a Save As, and it'll ask me two questions that we'll cover in a later training video. Where do you want to save it, and what name do you want to give it? Because there's the generic name here, in any case. Where do you want to save it? Now, by default, it wants to save it in the Documents folder every time I save it. Well, for the most part, I want to save it on my desktop. And then from time to time, I'll navigate over here and choose maybe in my Videos folder or Downloads or whatever. But for the most part, I want to save it on my desktop. And I don't want to have to come over here and click on the Desktop in the Navigation pane every time I want to save it to the desktop. So let's go ahead and click Cancel and set the options for saving it to the desktop and not the Documents folder by, again, going Backstage down to Options, and select Save, and come over here to the default local file location. So you can see right now it's always going to save it to the Documents folder. And it's coming from the C drive to the users. I'm logged in as Training into the Train Documents folder. So just go ahead and click Browse. And say you want the desktop. Choose whatever folder you want to save it into, like maybe the Exercises folder on the desktop. I double-clicked on it, clicked OK. Now it goes from the C drive to the user logged in as training to the desktop and on the desktop in the exercises folder. You can do it that way or if you want. I want to go back to my desktop. I don't want it to go into the exercises folder. Well, let me just go ahead and click in there and hit the backspace key so I can get rid of the exercises folder. So when I click save, it goes right to the desktop. You can do it that way. And then go ahead and click OK. So when I click save, it doesn't go to the documents folder but right to the desktop. Oakley Doakley. Let me go ahead and click Cancel. And then finally, let's go backstage again, File, down to Options, to the Save category or Tab. And by default, it wants to do an automatic recovery save every 10 minutes. In other words, what's going to happen is, is that if I'm not saving my document every 10 minutes, it'll do an automatic save for me. So if I'm like, mm, that's too long, you can go ahead and set that down so it automatically saves every minute. So if something happens, then up to that minute, you got your document saved for you. And I'll show you in a later training video how you can recover those unsaved documents that it was saving for you, at least up until if I do it down to every minute. But yeah, I'll go back to every 10 minutes. In any case, whatever works best for you. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.